Hi everybody, today we'll talk about crossed field and discovery of electron by Joseph John Thompson in the 19th century. Uh, nowadays we know what, what electrons are. They are particles negatively charged with a mass much much smaller than atoms. But before the 19th century we didn't think that way. Actually we didn't know the existence of electron. So what conducted electricity? So we thought that electricity is conducted by atoms. These atoms are positively charged atoms, so basically ions. But Thomson, he did this experiment and he proved that this particle that conducts electricity, actually they are negatively charged particles and they are much, much lighter than atoms, even atom of hydrogen. So we were able to make a beam of this conducting particle. So one of these particles is drawn here. Uh, it has a charge Q and mass M and we don't know the charge, we don't know the mass at that time. Let's say if I, I'm able to accelerate this to create this particle and accelerate it, so it will have speed, it has, sorry, a velocity V in this direction. Let's assume this particle is very tiny, so I will neglect the effects of, of gravity and the speed is very high. So this particle, it will, there is no force acting on it, so it will follow a linear path like this. So this we call it an undeflected path. Let's put this particle inside a region of two plates. This plate is positively charged and this plate is negatively charged. So in other words, in this region there is an electric field pointing downward, so that the electric field lines. If the charge is positively charged, the force will be downward, so the force will be deflected downward like this. Thompson he did this experiment and he see that this beam of the charge goes up, which means that this conducting particle, they have a negative charge. So he did a lot of experiment to verify this, but he wanted to go further to understand the nature of these particles. So if you come back to your um, electrostatic course, we can calculate the deflection y, which is given by half the acceleration times square and if I assume that the length of this plate is L well I have L equal the speed times T not that the speed is horizontal here in this case so I can use that and I can get the deflection half acceleration L square over V square but what is the acceleration well, if we see that the particle is deflecting up, it means that there is a force, the electrostatic force is upward. And the electrostatic force is equal to what? To the charge times electric field. And this equal to the mass of the particle times the acceleration. So I can use that to get the acceleration. And finally, the deflection will be equal to half the charge times electric field L square over the mass and V square. All right, so this deflection, we can measure it in the laboratory and Thomson did that. So he applied different electric field and he had calculated different deflections. So the electric field, there is a way how to calculate it, to measure it even. Um, well, uh, the charge and the mass, we don't know them. We don't know the charge and the mass of this particle, but we know now that this mass, uh, that this charge is negative. What about velocity? Can we calculate velocity? So if I ask my students nowadays how to calculate electricity, they will think a little bit about it, but they will ask themselves how this 
beam of charge is created while it's created from a source here. And how it's accelerated? Well, by applying a difference in potential. We apply a difference in potential. So you might say that we can apply a conservation of energy, Q times V, potential energy equal half M V square, and we can get V. Well, this we cannot do it at that time because we know we don't know the mass and we don't know the charge. So we can so this idea it will not be useful to calculate the velocity. And the velocity of this particle is very high, so you, you cannot just measure it. So Thompson he thought about a different way how to do it and by using a crossed field. So he used an electric field and he added to that a magnetic field. Our question how to calculate the velocity of this particle by using a magnetic field. So we, we, we have here an electric field, electric field line pointing downward. There is an electric force upward, so the particle will deflect up like this. So let's say if I add a magnetic field and the magnetic field is pointing into the plane. So that's my magnetic field. What will happen? So let's see if I apply right hand rule, V cross B, V cross B is upward. The particle, it has a negative charge, negative charge like this. So the magnetic force, it will be downward. So what will happen to the path? Well, these two force will, I need to add them, I need to subtract them actually. So the deflected part, it will, so the particle will deflect less because there is an electric force upward and there is a magnetic force downward. And if I keep changing the magnetic field strength, well, the beam will deflect much less, up to one value of B at which the beam will move in straight line. When this happens, you figure it out, when these two force are equal to each other in magnitude and different in, in direction. So when I have F electric and magnetic force cancelling each other. So we should have Fe equal Fb. What is Fe? That is charge times electric field. The uh, magnetic force, that the charge times velocity, the speed, sorry, times the, the magnetic field. Sine phi, but phi here just 90 degrees, so sine 90 degrees. If you work this out, you will find that the speed is equal to what? E over B. And that's what Thompson did. So he keep changing, he apply an electric field, he deflect the beam, he measure the deflection Y, and after that, he change it, he apply a magnetic field, and he change it in its strength until the beam travel in horizontally, so without any deflection. He used that strength, that specific strength of magnetic field to calculate the velocity of this particle. So once we get the velocity of the particle, we can get a mass over charge ratio by plugging it in the previous uh, equation, and you will get mass over charge ratio is equal to B square, L square over 2Y times electric field. All these quantity, we can measure them in labs. And that's what Thompson did. He, he ended up with the ratio, with the mass per charge ratio of this particle. So from his experiments, he did use that the mass of electron 
are much, much smaller than the mass of hydrogen atoms. So the smallest hydrogen atoms, the smallest atoms, the mass of electron is very, very small. And he predicted that the ratio between the hydrogen mass per electron mass, so the hydrogen mass is greater than 1,000. It's greater than 1,000. In fact, if you use your calculator, then you, you will find that the, this ratio actually is equal to what? 1,856. So that's how uh, Thomson calculated, predicted that the mass of electron are much, much smaller than mass even of hydrogen atom. If I am not in this condition, if I am not in the right B that, give, that cancel out the force, how I can calculate the force? If I am following, for example, this part here. Yeah. So how I can calculate the force? So um, calculating the force, it means you calculate the electric force, Q times E. You calculate the magnetic force, and you add them, and you get from that the direction and the magnitude of the new force. How we can write this force in vector form? So if I have a charged particle, in an electric field and a B field, so in crossed field. What is the force? Well, the force is just, we said, an electrical part has an electrical part plus a magnetic part. The electric force is just QE and magnetic force QV cross B. So that's, if you take charge, common factor, that's E plus V cross B. So that's what we call Lorentz force. Okay. So in our previous experiment, how I can deduce the B so that the force is zero. If I want this force is zero, so you need that this term is equal to zero. That's what you need. And this, it happens when the speed is equal to E over B. But in general case, if this is not zero, so that's the way how to calculate the force vector. Thank you for watching. See you in next video.